All right, hi guys. So today we are starting on lesson 5.2. So we're moving on from um, the last lesson where we looked at adding and subtracting radicals. So <clears throat> like I mentioned in the last video, uh, section 5.2 in your textbook is actually multiplying and dividing radicals, but I've broken down the lesson into two parts. So today we'll start out with uh, multiplying. So we are starting out again, kind of like we did last time, with a little bit of an investigation to see what we can kind of figure out about how multiplying radicals is going to work before I actually give you the steps of how to do it. And it's a really good idea to try and go through this and see if you can figure it out on your own. Think of it kind of like a little bit like a puzzle of how you can figure out, um, like in this particular one, you're given two radicals that are being multiplied by each other and you're given the answer. So what I'd like you to do is see if you can figure out how these numbers could make these numbers. Think about some of the steps that we looked at in the previous lesson um, that that kind of that we used in order to do adding and subtracting and see if you can figure out how they might apply in a way that would make these numbers combine but through multiplication instead of adding and subtracting to make this number okay so the reason why i say that this is important is because the more that you can get to an understanding of how this works on your own, the more likely you're going to be to remember it. Whereas if I just tell you the steps, it's it can be a little bit harder to kind of keep that in your head. If you've figured it out yourself, one time you can figure it out again. So if you're feeling stumped on a test, you know that you have the power to basically come up with these answers on your own if you've done it before. Okay, so this might be a good place to pause the video and see if you can figure out how would these numbers multiply together to make um, this number, okay? <clears throat> if you feel like you're really stumped, I'll give you one hint, which is to remember that sometimes simplifying the radicand can help you out. Okay, so if you've paused the video and you've tried to figure it out on your own, hopefully you've been able to figure it out. If you haven't, then we'll walk through it now. So <clears throat> if we look at how these numbers combine, like I mentioned there before, a little bit of a hint would be that sometimes simplifying the numbers can help. So 2 root 7, we can't simplify any further um, because 7 doesn't factor down. But 75, we could factor down. So um, let's see, we have 4 root 75. And we can factor 75 down into, let's say, 25 times by 3. And remember, when we have a root like this, we're always looking for squared numbers underneath it. <clears throat> so in this case, 25, we know, is a squared number of 5 squared. Okay, so that means that any of the squared numbers, remember, you can square root them and move them outside of the bracket. And then the number that is not squared has to stay inside. So now we have 2 root 7 stays the same. <clears throat> 5 gets multiplied out, so 5 times 4 is 20. And then inside of the radical, we still have the 3. So now if you look at these two numbers being multiplied together, does it make a little bit more sense how these numbers might be the answer? We have 2 and 20 on the outside and 7 and 3 on the inside. So if you came back and you tried to solve it on your own and you couldn't get there, maybe this would be a good point again for you to pause the video and think, how will these make this number? Okay, so basically you can probably tell if you pause the video and figured it out on your own, 2 times 20 is 40, and so we just multiply the coefficients together to get, um, maybe I'll write it out here, 2 times 20. And what about inside here? We find that we have a radicand of 21. Inside of these radicands, uh, like the two separated radicals, we have a radicand of 7 and a radicand of 3. And how do we know that those numbers relate to 21? Well, through multiplication. 7 times by 3. So now if we simplify what we have here, we get 2 times 20 is 40, and 7 times 3 is 21. And that is the answer that we had up there. So now you can see... <clears throat> 
that with multiplication it's a little bit different than addition because remember with addition you do not change um, the radicand, right? You just have to look for like terms and then you can combine them. But with multiplication, we can multiply what's inside of the radical sign. There's a different way that you can also do this if you were to not simplify these first. So if you were to do um, 2 root 7 times by 4 root 75, you like unlike with adding and subtracting where you want to simplify first so that you can find like terms with multiplication if you wanted to you could just multiply straight through to begin with so 2 times 4 would give us 8 and 7 times by 75 would give us 525 so but of course we can see that this doesn't give us our answer so basically now you would do the simplification so you still have to do the same steps but you can do them in the reverse order you don't have to simplify first if you don't want to personally i find it easier to simplify first because you're working with smaller numbers so it's easier to get to your factors really quickly whereas with this one um like i did five squared is 25 times by because I know that 25 will be a factor of this and so I just did um, 525 divided by 25 which gave me 21 okay um, now 21 can factor down to 7 and 3 but because um, those two things are are different we know that we can't move them out as coefficients so basically 7 times by 3 is going to have to stay under the radical sign and only this 5 squared can move out so basically if we square root the 5 squared we get 5 times 8 which is 40 and then under the radical we still have 7 times 3 which is 21 okay so same answer just a little bit of a different way to get there all right, so we're just going to look at a quick little statement that kind of says everything that we just figured out. So multiplying radicals works the same way as multiplying polynomials, right? So um, I talked about that a little bit in the previous lesson. So if like with a polynomial, if you had like x squared times by x, then you could multiply those two together to get x cubed, right? So it doesn't matter that they're not like terms. Whereas if you had x squared plus x, remember that you can't do that. <clears throat> so that's how this is similar to, to working with polynomials. So you can perform the operation on the coefficient first and then perform the um, operation on the radicand second. Of course, like, I mean, if you're comfortable with it, you can just kind of do them both at the same time. So keep in mind the product of two square roots is equal to the square root of the product. So if we have square root A times by square root B, it's the same as saying the square root of A times B. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so like, for example, root 3 times by root 2 gives us root 6, right? Because you can multiply those together. Um, the product of two mixed radicals is equal to the product of the rational numbers times the product of the radicals. So basically like the coefficients times by the product of the radicals. So if we have C root A times D root B, we end up with C times D on the outside, right? The two coefficients multiplied together and then A times B. So the two radicals, um, or sorry, radicands uh, multiplied together there. One other thing that's kind of a probably good to be aware of is um, to think about what happens if you multiply the same uh, roots together. So for example, if you have square root of 4 times by the square root of 4, what's going to happen? What are you going to end up with? Well, what is the square root of 4? It's 2 and the square root of 4 is 2. Whoops, I don't know why I put in a radical sign there. Okay, so square root of 4 is 2, square root of 4 is 2, so 2 times 2 gives us 4. So what do you notice about the end answer and the beginning question here? Hopefully you can see that we had, like, 
um, a perfect square of two radicals. And when you multiply those together, you end up with the square root, right? So whatever number is underneath, whatever radicand you have here, if you're multiplying it by itself, the answer is that radicand without the radical sign, okay? Um, and that will come up more as we kind of move forward. So hopefully that'll help you out with future questions. So let's go through and try some examples. Our first one is 5 root 3 times 2 root 21. So first we're going to multiply our coefficients, 5 times 2, and root 3 times by 21. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now what I would probably do here is know that I can break down my 21 into 3 and 7, right? So this is kind of like if I were to simplify first, but I ended up putting it in here, so I don't want to go back. So 5 times 2 I'm going to carry down to be 10. Now underneath the radical sign, if I think about what I have all factored out here, 3 doesn't factor down, so that's the bottom of its own factor tree, and 3 here. So remember if I have two 3's, that basically means I have 3 squared times by 7, right? And any squared value can move outside. So now I'm going to have 5 times 2 is 10 times by this 3 squared that I'm moving outside of the radical. So 10 times 3, and then in the square root sign, I'm going to have the 7 left over. So now I'm going to have 30 root 7 as my final answer. Okay. The other way you could have done that would have just been to factor this one first. So you would have said, uh, wait a minute, actually, no, that wouldn't work super well, because if you factor this one down, it's not going to have a squared. So it's only when you combine them that you're going to have the two threes. So yeah, maybe doing this way is, is kind of the best way. The other thing you could have done too here is just multiplied the 3 and the 21 together. So you would have had like 5 times 2 on the outside times by 3 times 21, which would be 63. And then you can start factoring your 63 if that makes you more comfortable to multiply them together um, before you start factoring. Okay, but you should end up with the same number. Because here I would have done like 63, I would have done 9 times 7, and we know that 9 is 3 squared. So then I know that I'm moving that outside, and the 7 stays inside of the radical. <clears throat> okay, let's try another one. So here we have a mixed radical being uh, multiplied by an entire radical. So what do we do there? Well, it's not going to be any different. The only thing we need to remember is that there's kind of an invisible coefficient of 1. So basically it's 5 times 1 on the outside. And then underneath the radical, we're going to have 3 times by 6. Now 6, if we factor that down, is going to be 3 times by 2. So again, we see, just like with the previous one, there's two 3s here. And then there's a 2, which um, doesn't have a duplicate, so it's going to have to stay inside of the radical. So we have 3 squared, basically. And so we're going to move that outside, so 5 times by 3, and then root of the remaining factor there, which is 2. We'll stay inside, so 5 times 3 is 15, times by root 2, and that's the end. All right, let's try a more complicated one. So with this one, we have a mixed radical being multiplied by a bracket that includes two different radicals. So all you have to remember here is just like anything else you would do in math, if you have brackets with something being multiplied by outside, you have to make sure that you multiply the outside by both of the terms inside of the brackets. So first of all, we want to do, um, and also just pay attention to the fact we're dealing with a cube root here. So negative 2 times by 4, and then we're going to have 11 times by 2 under the radical. Okay, and then we're going to have, um, so this one, and then negative 2 times by negative 3, so uh, negative 2 times by negative 3, kind of like with addition and subtraction, I like to just kind of keep it like this, and then once I have my positive or negative value, then I can write my full term as being addition or subtraction. So negative 2 times by negative 3, and then 11 times by 3 under the radical sign is what we're going to be working with. Okay, so negative 2 times by positive 4 is negative 8, and 11 times by 2 is 22. 
then positive or sorry, negative 2 times negative 3, so 2 negatives are going to make a positive, and 2 times 3 is 6, and then 11 times 3 is going to give us 33 under the radical. So 22 can't be factored down into anything that has a square in it, and neither can 33, because 11 doesn't factor down, and neither does 3, and same thing with 11 and 2 here. So this is my final thing that I'm going to have, and because I don't have like terms as, or sorry, like radicals, I guess I should say, I can't combine them, so I'm not going to add them together. I'm going to leave the final statement like this. So this can also be something that students get a little bit tripped up on, is remembering that you don't have to try and force like simplification. So you don't have to try to keep making this simpler and simpler if it doesn't seem right. So this is where you have to remember your addition rules, right? That once you get to this point, you would only simplify if you have like radicals. Okay. Let's look at another example here. So multiply and simplify where possible. So this is moving a step kind of past where we just were because now we have two brackets being multiplied by each other. But the same rule applies. You just have to make sure that everything gets multiplied by everything, basically. And so remember that the way we kind of keep track of that is to use the acronym FOIL. So first, so remember for FOIL, you start with the first terms. So we're, we want to multiply the first terms in each bracket together. So 4 times by, this has a coefficient of 1, so it's going to be 4. And then root 2 times by root 7 is going to be uh, root 14. Okay. Then we want to use the outside terms, so the ones that are on the outsides of the brackets. So it's going to be 4 root 2 times by negative 5 root 14. So 4 times by negative 5, remember to keep that positive or negative sign together with the number, is going to be negative 20. And then 2 times by 14 is going to be root 28. Okay, then we want to use our inside terms, so the terms that are on the insides of the brackets. So we have 3, just a whole number 3, multiplied by a radical. Don't be confused by this, it's basically just still a coefficient, it just doesn't have a radical attached to it. So what we're going to do is 3 times by the invisible coefficient of 1 here, so it's going to be positive 3. And then there's no radical for this one, so the only radical that's attached to that coefficient is going to be the one that's um, present in this term, so it's going to be root 7. And then last is last, so we want to multiply the last term. So again, plus 3 times by negative 5. Positive 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And then again, the only radical is the one that's here, so we can just keep that one the same, so root 14. Okay. Um, so now we want to look at simplifying, because you can see that we kind of have some like terms, but there's also some terms that we could maybe simplify here. So 28, how can we factor that down? Well, 4 times 7 would be 28 and 4 is 2 squared. So 2 is something we could move outside the bracket there. With 14, it's 7 times 2, so there's no squared number that we can move outside there. 7 doesn't factor down, and then we have the other 14 here. So let's look at simplifying just this one term. So we're going to have 4 root 14, negative 20 times by 2 gives us negative 40, root, okay, so we took out the 4, so we're left with root 7, plus 3 root 7, minus 15 root 14, so everything else is staying the same. Now what we want to do is, if we can simplify, we want to. So basically we need to look for like terms, so 4 root 14 and 15, negative 15 root 14, those are like terms, and then we also have the 2 root 7 terms so we can simplify those. So remember, don't force it, but if there are like terms, then you can simplify. So 4 minus 15 gives us negative 11. And then the, remember that for adding and subtracting, the radical stays the same, so 14. And then negative 40, so remember to keep that number together, plus 3 gives us negative 37. Okay, and then root 7 stays the same. 
And there's our term. Okay, last one here. Um, we have negative 2 root 11c times by this whole set of brackets. This time we're given a restriction. So remember from last time that we always want our radicals to be, if they have an even, um, if they have an even index, then we can't have the value underneath the radical sign be less than zero, okay? And so that's basically what they're saying here. You know what, though, saying that, I just remembered something from the previous page. Where did I put that? Um, right. <laughs> That just triggered my memory that these were cube roots. Now still it works out that these you wouldn't be able to simplify them um, because there is no cube root for either one of these numbers but I just remembered that that those were cube roots so I should double check them. <laughs> so hopefully if you guys are working on this you'll remember that a little more quickly but still sometimes if you move on to other questions it triggers your memory of a previous question and hopefully that happens on a test if you need it to. Um, okay so let's work this through. So again we have one value being multiplied by a set of brackets so we just need to make sure we multiply through to both of them. So the first one is multiply the two coefficients. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. And then let's see both of these are root now what you need to do here is multiply the number values together just the way you would for any polynomial turn and then you can multiply the um, the variables so 11 times 2 is 22 and c times by c cubed is going to be c to the power of 4 so remember when you're multiplying the variables you just add the exponents and if there's no exponent it's an invisible exponent of 1 Okay, so then we have 3 plus 1 gives us C4. Okay, then we want to multiply our next thing. So negative 2 multiplied by, remember to keep the negative together here. So negative times by negative is positive, and 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, and then we have to multiply our radicals. So 11 times by 3 is 33, and then there's no variable in this radical, so we just keep this C from the previous one there. Okay, so let me think here. Now we just want to see about simplifying these down if we can at all. Um, 33 would be 11 times 3 is the only factor and neither of those has a square root and same thing with 22 would be 11 times by 2 but with our C4 we can simplify that because remember we're looking for squared values so it's going to be 22 times by c squared times by c squared so we have two squared values there plus 6 times by root 33c and neither one of those can be broken down further so remember for each squared value we can square root it and move it outside the bracket so we're going to have negative 8 times by the first c times by the second c and what we're left with inside is the root 22 and again the last term stays the same so plus 33c and then we just want to simplify these by combining them so we're going to have negative 8c squared root 22 um, plus 6 root 33c and that would be our final answer there okay so remember that um, before you finish any multiplication problem you should simplify not just like addition but also simplifying the radicands so if you can move anything outside to make it um, um, like to increase the value of the coefficient I guess and decrease the radicand you want to go ahead and do that okay so that's everything for multiplying radicals um, you have some practice questions to try on page 289 to 293 and next time we're going to carry on with 5.2 by looking at dividing radicals so I will see you then